The Couple Next Door. Written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. Hello. Oh, hi, Eleanor. Huh? Oh, I don't know. Just a second. Uh, she's wrapping Christmas presents. Yeah, wait a minute. Honey, you going to be home tomorrow? Oh, yes, all day. A million things to do. Who is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, she is, Eleanor. Leaving? For where? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Oh, aren't you lucky? Well, look, if I don't see you... Merry Christmas to you and Fred. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Oh. You're all right. I'll tell her. Okay, Eleanor. Goodbye. I didn't know Fred and Eleanor were going to Florida for Christmas. Mm, I told you oh. that. They're spending Christmas with her brother. Oh, no, I didn't know. She's dropping over mm. tomorrow before they go with something. Dropping over with something? Yeah. Why, didn't we plan to give them anything? No! Oh, well, I don't oh. know. It's what she said. Oh, that is so typical of Ellen and I. We all agreed at Bridge Club not to exchange Christmas presents this year. You and I were just going to exchange with Myra and George this uh, year. Well, can't be helped now. She she wants to leave the keys, too. Oh, what <clears throat> keys? Keys to the house, I suppose, so we can keep an eye on it while they're gone. She's dropping over early in the morning. Oh. <laughs> well, what do we do? We've got to have something for them if they have something for us. Now, look. The spirit of Christmas is giving, not exchanging. If you decide not to exchange and Eleanor still wants to give us something, can't we just accept it graciously and say thank you? Well, it's a beautiful thought, but just the same, everyone expects it. We gave the Wilsons those lovely bookends last year, and we thought it was very funny. They just sent us a card. Oh, well, we have got to have something to give Eleanor. All right, all right, now calm down, calm down. Well, it it makes me so mad when you agree with somebody not to exchange, and you think they mean it. And then they turn around and give you something, and you have nothing for them. Look, you know? it's only I mean, quarter it's of eight. Just... The stores are still open. I can oh, tear down here to please. the shopping center and pick up something. If you give me an idea what the heck to an get. An idea? Heavens, I don't know what to get them. Well, we must have a hundred of these gift suggestion booklets around here. Where are they? Let's Makes look. me so mad when people do this. And you know, somebody always does. Every well, year, next somebody year, always does. Well, let's have does. a spare present on hand. I've always said... All right, all right. How much do you think we ought to spend? I don't know. How much do you think they spent on us? Oh, golly, I haven't the faintest idea. Oh, really, I don't know why Eleanor did this. Now, stop but worrying yes, about why she did it. She did it. Now, let's just know, find the gift suggestion booklets. Let's go through them. I've got exactly one hour and 15 minutes to get down to the stores and buy something. <laughs> No men have earned the right to call the world their own. Two who have come fairly close on the basis of travel and experience are Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas. Wanderlust has never served a more fruitful purpose than theirs, for it's their eyewitness experience that lends so much authority to their broadcasts. Monday through Friday evening on most of these same stations, you're listening to more than mere second-hand reports when Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas are on the job. Each man has the knack, born from personal experience, of translating a headline into its historical values, a news feature into its full depth of meaning. You can't buy experience like theirs. But thanks to them and to CBS Radio, you can have it every weekday evening. Make Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas a habit. It's a sure way to be fully informed and to be fully certain that the information you're getting is factual, couched in terms they understand and you understand too. Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas on most of these same stations. What's wrong with giving Eleanor and Fred an ashtray? Nice ashtray. No, no, no. Now look through those other booklets. We ought to give them something unusual, so it'll look as though we plan to give them something. Well, here's a power-driven lawnmower. That's unusual. It's also two hundred and ten dollars. Oh, don't be silly. How about steak knives? Nah, they certainly have steak knives. Fred lives in the backyard all summer cooking those charcoal steaks. Mm. Hey, how about a basket of assorted things, you know, cheeses and all that? They look nice. Prices range from three fifty to thirty nine fifty. Oh no, the boxes for three fifty look so dinky, it doesn't look as though you're giving anything. And the expensive ones have things like pickled walnuts and smoked guinea hen. I mean Hey, you know. hey, how about a carved ivory Chinese back scratcher? That's unusual. Huh? Oh, 
Well, how about a book? Fred likes books on trout fishing. Uh, be nice for Elner. She doesn't go trout fishing. Yeah, she can learn. Well, give her some bath powder. Oh, I can't give her bath powder. Well, she takes a bath, doesn't she? Bath powder is the kind of thing that when you get it, you know perfectly well the other person couldn't think of anything else to give you. <laughs> and she would be so right. Yeah, I'll get it, I'll get it. Oh, here, here's something for the man or woman who has everything, honey. Solid gold front door key with his initials and diamonds and rubies. Honey, how about that? <clears throat> That's unusual. And something they could both use, matter of fact. What do you think? It's only $3,350. Oh, answer <laughs> the phone. Because we probably couldn't get the initials put on by tomorrow morning anyhow, so that's not a... Hello? Huh? Oh. Oh, all right. Fine. Okay, Eleanor. Fine. Goodbye. What? She won't have time to drop by tomorrow morning. She's coming over now. Now? Yeah, yeah, no. now. What, what, what do we do? If she's got something for us, we've got to have something for well, something for them right now. We we'll have to wrap up something we bought for somebody else. There, what, 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 what's that? A copper chafing dish. You can't take that. I bought it especially for Myra. It's exactly what she wants. Well, what else have we got? Oh, dear, here's the sweater we bought for your mother, the bedroom slippers for Uncle Bob. Oh, I've mailed everything. I've just mailed everything. Now, look, it'll only take Eleanor a few minutes to get here. We better wrap up that chafing dish. I spent fourteen ninety five for that. I don't think we should spend that much on Eleanor and Fred. It's hardly just a little something. Darling, we have no choice. If you want something wrapped up by the time she gets here, now, come on. Help wrap it up. Is this the box? Oh, honestly, I bought that especially for Myra. She wanted to... A copper chafing dish. What does she think if I give it to Eleanor? Find some paper, will you? Paper, paper. Hurry up. Buy Myra another chafing dish. I can't give Myra and Eleanor the same thing. They think it was very funny. They know perfectly well that I... Oh, not that paper. Oh, honey, that's my good 50-cent paper I bought to wrap your present well, uh, in. Well, never mind. Never mind. Now, hurry up. Will you get some scotch tape? Scotch tape. Oh, it's here somewhere under this mountain of wrappings. Wait a minute. Oh, I can't find any. Really, I have well, no I... I said to Eleanor about not changing, you know. Oh, What's the yes. matter? What well, is it? The what paper is... doesn't reach. It's one inch too now. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. I've got some extra large size Christmas wrapping paper here someplace. Get out of the way. Just get out of the way. Well, you, you better step on it. Get I'm telling you, she'll be here oh, in less than ten it? minutes. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, the car, uh, car just uh, turned in the drive. Now, have you, have you got the ribbon tied? Oh, no, of course. Well, when you try to rush... What yes, about a card? Anything? A card? Huh? A oh, card, card. Yes, Look, yes, I'll I... I'll tie the ribbon on. You, you, you go write the card. Write you do the it. Write the card, write the yeah. card, card. Of course, Hurry I can't now. find anything oh. here. Well, here's a card, here's a card. Now, where's the pen? Pen, pen, pen. Have you got a pen? Oh, pen, yes, pen. Yeah, honestly. Now, look, don't ruin the no, point now. When you get yeah. the bow tied, put it on the hall table yeah. so it looks as though we had it all ready for. Oh, what do I say to what to... Can't even think of their names. Oh, Eleanor and Fred. Oh, Eleanor and Fred. Yes, with love. That's with enough. love, yes. Honestly, Boy, always rushing around some here. package, I'm telling you. It looks as though it's been wrapped up by a two-year-old and then love. kicked around. All right, Christmas, fluff up the bow a little bit. Now, here's the card. Put it uh, on top. Now, I'll go out in the kitchen, and when she comes in, you can sort of call to me, you know, look who's here, you know, that, that sort of thing, and I'll come in casually mm-hmm. so it won't look as though we've been rushing around frantically. Yeah. Hurry up, now. Uh, put it on the whole table. Yeah, yeah, I am, I am, boy. I hope she's not looking through the window. All I gotta say. <laughs> well, well, hi, Eleanor. Come on in. Oh, I can't stay but a minute. I'm on my way to the kennels to leave the dogs while we're gone. Oh, oh yeah, Gally. You know, I think dogs get awfully lonesome in kennels. Can't you take them with you? Oh, not in the car all the way to Florida, but we certainly appreciate your taking care of these. Where'll I put them? Put what? The birds. Birds? The parakeets. Oh, didn't she tell you? I asked weeks ago if you folks would take care of them while we were gone. Oh, 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 no, no, she didn't, as a matter of fact. Well, well, sure, of course, I'll never. Very glad to. I mean, well, what's that you got there, a bird cage? Oh, yes. I keep them covered up. It's cold out. Now, shall I just set them on the coffee table? You want to bring in the stand? It's just outside the door. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll get the stand. Just, just, just set them right there, Eleanor. That, that's fine. And many thanks for taking care of them. Yeah. I must run. Fred and I have so much to do, but I hope you have, have a merry Christmas. Oh, well, thank you, Eleanor. You, you too. You oh, too, Fred. Fred. I thought I heard uh, voices. Uh, dear. Oh, Eleanor. Hello, oh, dear. dear. <laughs> Sorry I can't stay longer, but Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas to you, dear, and have a wonderful trip. Oh, I know I, we uh, will. Of course, Fred and I 
fire rushing around. So oh, much to do at the last dear, minute. Dear, I'll dear. bet you do, my <coughs> goodness. And you What's the matter? Hey, nothing, dear. Nothing, nothing. Oh. Why? <laughs> well, you tell Fred we certainly wish him a merry... Come <laughs> You jabbed your elbow right in my ribs. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing, honey. No, no, sorry. I'm trying to put my cigarette out in this ashtray. Here. Well, oh, I'm a run. Oh, well, do have a wonderful time. Wait a minute, dear. You didn't <coughs> give Eleanor the, the... What's the matter? Nothing, dear. Not a thing. Oh, Eleanor. <laughs> here you are. It's just a little something. My oh, goodness. you didn't. I thought we agreed not to exchange this year. Oh, dear, I feel terrible. Well, I... I... Eleanor brought over the birds, dear, which uh, I said we'd certainly be glad to take care of for her. <laughs> the birds? The parakeets. I asked you weeks ago if you would, and you said you would. Oh! Oh, yes, yes. Or, of course. I, I, yes. I just forgot for a minute, Eleanor. I... I phoned oh. and said I was bringing them. Didn't he tell you? Oh, yes, oh, yes, sure. yes, yes, yes. You're, you're sure me. you don't mind taking care of them? Oh, no, not at all. I, I... But you shouldn't have given me a present. <laughs> well, it's just a little something. Thank you, that. dear. And Merry Christmas. I must run. Yeah, well, Merry Christmas, nice dear. Have a nice trip, the yes, two of you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Well, don't look at me. Look, you didn't have to give her the present. I tried to give you the high sign, but... Like all women, when you try to signal them on the QT, they say in a loud voice, What's the matter? What exactly did Eleanor say when she phoned this evening? Well, I don't know. I don't remember exactly. Well, you think. Honestly, a fourteen ninety five chafing dish. I want to know exactly what she said. <laughs> There is no sense of going on about it all evening. When Eleanor phoned, you told me she said she was bringing over oh. a present. Well, can't we drop the subject? I gave her a fourteen ninety five chafing dish. Now, not that I don't like her, I do. And she's been wonderful to me. She's always offering to take care of oh. Bobby when I have to go somewhere. But I know Eleanor. She was upset I gave her something when we agreed not to exchange... And with all she's got to do, I know she's wondering frantically right now what she can give me. When she called tonight, she said she was dropping over with the house keys and the things for us, something like that. She said it in this giggly way people do when they have a present for you, you know. Yes, I know how she'd say it. <sighs> well, did she leave the house keys? Oh, no. No, she didn't. Look, you better call and remind her. First, I don't know why they'd ask us to keep an eye on their house. We're so far away. Why didn't she ask one of her neighbors? Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's what she said. I'm bringing over a pair of keys, she said. I, I suppose to the front and back door, so... A pair of keys? Yeah. Parakeets! Huh? Parakeets, not pair of keys! Oh, for heaven's sake, how could... All right, all right, all right, really? all right, parakeet, yeah, <laughs> What okay. is the matter with I don't with know, I'm said. sorry, I never... Th- oh, then I guess as you said, dear, yeah. the spirit of Christmas is giving, not exchanging. Yeah. <laughs> The Couple Next Door is written by Peg Lynch and stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunn with Dorothy Duckworth and is produced by Walter Hart.